Hello, hello, hello. It's Elizabeth Wales. I'm a mom, I'm a health educator, but most importantly, through struggles of my own, I found solutions that I'm excited to share with you. And with me is the amazing Dr. DeSessa from Back to Health Chiropractic in Southern California. If you have any chiropractic needs, I highly recommend him. He's done a lot of work on my back and I am so grateful for the adjustments. Now, today we are here to talk to you about something that I believe can help all thinking people. And this is um, one action that we can use to go from surviving to thriving. So if you know anyone who could benefit from this, please like, please share. We'd like to bring as much value to as many people as we can. So Dr. DeSessa, what is this one thing that we can all do to go from surviving to thriving with one simple action? Uh -huh. Well, the one simple action is really a thought. And that thought can change things almost instantly when we key into it. And that one simple thought is gratitude. When we get to that place of gratitude for really being grateful, it can make the difference between stressful thoughts, between resentments, between the poisonous thoughts, the things that come into our lives that don't help us, that don't serve us, that keep us in survival. And that can change it into that, that, that gratitude of like now we're in more in control, we're more in power, and we're happier. Mm -hmm. So gratitude is really the solution. The key, I hate to let the cat out of the bag so early, but that is it. But there's a lot more to gratitude than just the word itself. So let's talk a bit about that. Now, now, it's not a once a year at Thanksgiving thing either. It really is a thought pattern that a lot of people who are considered the happiest have adapted into their daily consciousness. Um, from Harvard Health, here's a little quote. It says, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. So today we want to go over a few aspects of gratitude and give you a few suggestions to help you to integrate gratitude into your daily thinking patterns. Let's face it, most people are not born in this world feeling grateful. If you think about an infant, we start off feeling pretty ungrateful and <laughs> just needy. But as we develop and as we mature, we can teach ourselves to look for the bright side to be grateful for the things that come into our lives, even the most difficult things. One thing that I always think about is how being grateful will actually change how we see our past, how we see our present, and how we see our future. And that is really, really impactful. Even the most difficult situations can be changed in hindsight with gratitude. Have you seen this, Dr. DeSessa? Seen it, experienced it, lived it. We know, uh, I mean, on that real basic, simple part of things that right now you have a life and it is a gift. That's why they call it the present, right? You're in this moment particularly. and Everything that you've been through that brought you to this particular point in life has been there for a reason. It's been there to teach you something. And if you can be truly grateful in the moment, it, the most basic part of what gratitude is, if you can be truly grateful in the moment, then then you have the ability to embrace the things of the past too. You're here and that's a beautiful thing. That is excellent, yes. Um, you, we talked about divorce last Friday and even with the difficult things like divorce, things where things did not go according to plan, I know that we do have to process the emotions and we never would say that you shouldn't process the emotions. If you haven't seen that video or if you're going through divorce, please check it out. It's very important to process negative emotions. But as time progresses, if we focus on being grateful, then we could eventually see how this has actually added value into our lives, taught us invaluable lessons that we had to learn, unfortunately, and made us um, into better servants of others so that we could help others better. Also in Harvard Health, it says gratitude is a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible. With gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In the process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside of themselves. As a result, Gratitude helps people connect to something larger themselves as individuals, whether to other people, nature, or higher power. And being able to look, look at what we're grateful for does help our spiritual health as well, as well as our emotional health. Have you found that, Dr. DeSessa? 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We do have to, to connect with something greater than ourselves when it comes to being in that point of gratitude. And I think the point that you made that is really uh, very important to touch on is that gratitude should never be forced. Like you shouldn't say, you know, if you're in a bad situation, you shouldn't be like, okay, I'm grateful for all these bad things that are happening. It doesn't work like that. Um, sometimes when you're in a bad situation, when things aren't going well in life, you kind of have to acknowledge it. You kind of have to be in it. You kind of have to, to understand that there, you know, listen, you can't be grateful for everything that happens to you. There's going to be things that happen that just aren't really that great. Uh, but to hold on to the things that you can be grateful in, in the moment, not maybe that particular negative event, but the other things around you can, that, that shift in focus or perspective can make all the difference for you. And yes, we have to stand back outside of ourselves to be grateful. We have to be like, thank you to God, you know, and, and listen, we're, we're faith-based people. We, you know, that's what we are, but no matter what it is, when you let it go for that gratitude, you got to give it up to something better. Thank you so much for what's come into my life or thank you for the things that I do have. That I'm very appreciative for. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. We go through something difficult and um, there's going to be people who are around us to support us. We could be grateful for that. Um, for example, also with the loss of someone that you love, you can always be grateful for the time you did have, of course. And sometimes I've found that the gratitude doesn't come immediately, but down the road, there's an aha moment where that's why that might have happened because now I understand this or now I have this in my life in place for this season. So just sometimes we can't always find the gratitude now. There's no pressure about that. But having the perspective of finding the gratitude that is available at the time um, really helps us to also stay in the present, which is really helpful as well. Okay, so that's uh, some of the ways that could benefit us. Can you think of any other ways that gratitude benefits a person in a personal way? Well, uh, there's a very, very grounding thing that happens with gratitude. So if you are in, uh, you know, if, if things aren't really going well, if you're in that moment of just despair or, or, uh, or resentment or anger, whatever the poison emotion is that we tend, we can fall ourselves into too easily. Just um, turn around and, and get to that gratitude can bring us right back to the present time consciousness and present time consciousness is really living life. And that's what things are. So it's good to be in it and listen, don't get me wrong on this. It's not that I'm saying that you shouldn't plan for the future. I think um, planning for the future is very important. We can't just all live in the moment. That would be right. very hedonistic. You know, there's something about that too, but just knowing where that gratitude comes in and where that can where that can bring you the joy how it's designed to work is that it's it's designed to bring us joy in good times and also in the times that are a little more challenging so yes a great source of joy and another one is it actually helps with our self-esteem because like i said it can change how we see our past it could see change how we see our present it could change how we see our future and through this we change how we see ourselves and the opportunities that are available to us because we are looking at the good things that are in our life. Awesome. So the next thing that gratitude really affects and helps us go from struggling to thriving by changing our thought process is in our interpersonal relationships. And um, maybe you know some people who are always complaining. <laughs> um, maybe you are that person. It can be yeah. difficult. <laughs> it can be difficult to have healthy interpersonal relationships with someone who's always looking at the negative side of things and aren't practicing gratitude. Um, what do you think about having uh, gratitude as a way to strengthen relationships, Dr. DeSessa? Well, um, yeah, we sometimes get paired with people that aren't necessarily happy all the time and grateful, and maybe their perspective is off a little bit. Maybe they've had some things in their life that, that makes it a little more difficult for them to see the gratitude. But we really have the ability in, in all the relationships of our lives to be um, a guiding light, to be one who does things as an example to others. So, uh, you know, hang in there. If you're with somebody who isn't always so grateful, don't try to force them to be grateful. Forced gratitude doesn't work, but but be uh, an example for yourself. Be grateful. Um, express your gratitude. You can do it often. Just thank you. Um, you know, thanking the person that you're with, thanking your friends and family, thanking the people who bring you things into your life, thanking God, thanking um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the ability to work, the ability to stand upright. My my 
my gratitude list is kind of a short one. It's an important one, but you know, the more things you have to be grateful for, I think, you know, the more you connect, but just being an example to others, that's the best way we can, we can work on that end. Uh, you had a really great example about the thermometer and the thermostat. Could you share that with everyone? Oh, sure. So um, let's face it with life, things come up and when things that don't necessarily go our way uh, happen, we can be reactionary about it. And that would be the thermometer. We can react to the environment. We can react to those things. And I think the way to gain more of a control uh, over our emotions and our responses is to be in gratitude. That way we are more of a thermostat. When you're in gratitude, you can ch change and affect things uh, with more control than just to be responding to things all the time. So that state of gratitude can really be quite helpful in not ending up in that reactionary state. You're in control awesome. with gratitude. Absolutely. And sometimes um, it's helpful when someone is looking at their cup half empty to start talking about the things that might be um, something they could be grateful for. Not that you don't acknowledge that they have a difficult situation, but we can always use the reminder to help with that thought process. It takes some work and effort to rewire the brain. <laughs> the third way that you yeah, yeah. And we're going to give you some tools of, to help do that in just a moment. But the third way that gratitude can benefit us is as a society. And this is from um, a, a research study by McLeod 2006 and Emmons and McNair 2008. Gratitude has a social aspect to it that argues it to be a socially driven emotion. Social psychologists believe it to be entwined with the perception of what we have done for others and what others have done for us. According to them, gratitude is an emotion that directly targets at building and sustaining the social bondings and reinforcing pro-social responses in the future. I know a lot of people right now want to make sure that we have a good world for our children. I'm, I'm very concerned about that myself. And being grateful to those in our community can really benefit this too. Um, Dr. DeSessa is an amazing chiropractor, like I mentioned, and I know that so many people are grateful for Dr. DeSessa and the environment that he provides and how does how do you see that that reinforces your social environment in your community? That's a great point. Um, although there's a sense of humility because I love what I do, I'm also very grateful for the people who come into my practice because I have the opportunity to help them. Gratitude, gratitude can be a two-way street. Um, and when we see that in the relationships of our lives, boy, doesn't that just make society a better place when people are grateful for each other for what they do? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, you know, I'm grateful every day to, to be able to help others. Uh, I know that there are people coming on practice who are, who are very grateful. Thank you, Elizabeth, for, for saying Thank that. You. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, never, you know, don't, don't take it for granted, that two-way street of gratitude. Um, we all have something to be grateful for. And if somebody is grateful to us, then, then we could probably be grateful to them, too. That's a very good point. And um, Dr. DeSessa's gratitude does really come through his demeanor and how he works with his patients. And um, it's really a, an amazing healing environment that you provide. And there is a sense of humility and gratitude as you do your work. And he's, he's also um, extremely blessed with the ability to help people through his chiropractic practice. So awesome. Um, is there any other ways that you see in our society that gratitude helps to build society stronger? Uh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> Let, let's say a society think, without gratitude, right? This is a society yeah, well, without you know, gratitude. Society without gratitude is doomed. I'm sorry. You know, there's just no way. I mean, it's just doomed. If we have no no gratitude, we have no, no appreciation for what we can do for each other. And, you know, it really kind of comes down to, you know, what we can do for each other as a society and, and being grateful for all the little wheels that turn that make our society do what it does. There's a lot of things at play here. And, uh, you know, I think there's a really great podcast and boy, I'm sorry if I, if I butchered this one, but if you look up, uh, listen to a podcast about um, what it takes to make a cup of coffee, uh, it's pretty fascinating. The number of people that are involved with it. And if you really like coffee, then you owe it to yourself to be grateful for every step along the way that gets it to where it is. So um, if you want to see how deep that gratitude can go, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of little wheels that turn. We should be very happy for all of them. 
That's a good point. And just um, taking it back to the office and your practice, um, if there was a break in the gratitude cycle that makes everything run so well, then someone is going to be deficient in feeling their value. And so just being focused on helping other people feel their value promotes more value adding into society, which promotes more gratitude. And so it just is a really good um, upward perpetuating cycle. Awesome. Okay, now for a few tips on how we can help to rewire our brains if we are not working on our gratitude, how we can implement this action of gratitude thought process into our lives. Number one is really popular. And if you haven't done it yet, you struggle with gratitude and being thankful, then I highly recommend gratitude journaling. I certainly have done it in the past. Dr. DeSessa, you've done it in the past? Just Yes, I have many gratitude journals. Awesome. Taking some time and writing about what you're grateful for during that day. It might sound a little bit basic, but it really helps and it does the trick. And I feel like writing takes a process that we are maybe foreign to and puts it into our normal thought process. And maybe then after some time, it's just going to be part of your regular routine until maybe we neglect it and then we need to go back to the gratitude journaling. What's one that you would recommend us doing to help promote gratitude in our society and our thought process? Well, when things get real challenging, there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, when you get out of the shower, when you take your, your do your daily routine, just looking yourself right in the eye and just saying, I'm grateful for you. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, just a simple thing. And then, of course, you can spread that to other people around you. Just do one thing today. If you do one thing, just say thank you for what you do to the people that you love and the people around you. And then if you really want to stretch yourself, say to say say it to somebody that you don't know. Hey, I just wanted to say, by the way, thank you for what you do. Do that to a stranger and see what happens. It's That's fun. That's awesome. And I really like what you just said is that, you know, unfortunately, sometimes other people aren't showing us the appreciation that we as people need in order to continue to give value but sometimes it can help to fill our own cup and be grateful for ourselves and just do that self-care that's a really good good point um another tip that i like is to thank people mentally so maybe you don't actually get to go up and say to a person thank you um i really appreciate delivery people <laughs> yeah right yeah especially now I, <laughs> Almost everything that I buy is somewhere online now and I hear the doorbell ring and I try to get to the door as fast as I can and they are running to their car to the next place I'm like thank you and even if they don't hear I'm at least sending them a thankful thought and just thanking people mentally is reminding us that we are not alone that other people are in this together with us and that helps with gratitude um now you mentioned another maybe maybe we could consider it maybe a little old-fashioned but highly effective way to thank other people and that is the thank you note what do you think the value of the thank you note is well, we're at that digital age now where you can say thank you to somebody with a text message, and that's fine and well. That's certainly received well. But there's something different about receiving something that you can hold on to. It creates a different anchor within the body because there's a physical part of it. There's a visual part of it. Uh, if you put some nice smelling stuff on it. experience can have a more powerful impact so uh i you know i like you know, i i would say i'm not alone in this but it's kind of nice to get a little thank you card uh from time to time yeah i know we're all busy today but um i like to put thank you no notes on like my shelf sometimes and and it again it is going to help fill someone's cup even more than a verbal or even a text message that they can't see and be reminded of i i like that too yeah um so if you have a few minutes Trying to do that could be a really beneficial thing. Praying and counting your blessing in prayer and meditation. That's another really good one. Just um, taking the time. If you aren't big on writing, just getting your music on and just thinking it through can be helpful. I, let's face it, writing takes a little bit longer than spending maybe five minutes in prayer and meditation being grateful. Um, making that a practice throughout your days. I know a lot of people do pray before meals, and that's a really good way to just be reminded that you know, not just about ourselves, but where this came from and what it took to bring us our food. 
Um, yeah, that, that's about it for me. Can you think of any other great tips that you use to mm. implement gratitude? Well, I'll expand on that one a little bit. If you do pray before your meals, it gives you an opportunity for at least three times a day, unless yeah. you're a fasting person like me, twice a day. But it does give you an idea, idea that the possibility to ground yourself back and not just to be grateful for uh, the food that you have. In our home, we do a prayer where we also are grateful for the roof over our heads. Yes, the food on the plates, the love in our hearts, our friends, our family. It's the way we just sort of acknowledge those around us that we're grateful to. And it does help keep perspective in. And if you can do that a couple of times a day, I think it really does have a power, powerful impact. And even, by the way, when you're eating alone, you can still be grateful and you can still do your prayer. Hey, it could even be more beneficial than having a distraction, right? Spending a little bit of time with your higher power, uh, being grateful for something. So. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, we didn't get into this very much, but there's some research that even says that being grateful can help improve sleep and can help reduce different kinds of pain because you're thinking about something positive and it really has a, a physiological effect on the body as well as a psychological. So that's that's pretty amazing. There's more research out that I'll have to um, get out to you at some point. Well, thank you so much, Dr. DeSessa. I really enjoyed talking about gratitude with you, especially with uh, Thanksgiving right around the corner. But of course, gratitude is not just for one day a year. It should be a constant thought process that's going to benefit us the most. If you enjoyed this, please like, please share. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. You can message me or Dr. DeSessa. And we hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And lifestyle to thrive. Bye-bye. Thank you.